I bought these two Godox B1 flashes about two years ago. A little less than two years, but for two full wedding seasons, I put these things to the test. And this is my thoughts about them. For the first part of my photography career, I used Yongnuo flashes. Uh, they're cheap, affordable, uh, and they were great. They were robust. They never broke on me. They were simple, but they, they worked really well. And that ability for me to buy affordable flashes was a kind of a game changer for me. There was no way I could afford the more expensive flashes like Nikon at the time. Uh, and so having these flashes opened up this whole world for me. And I think in a lot of ways helped me get to the next level uh, in my photography. And so my flashes were getting so old. I had used them for like, I don't know, six years, maybe seven years. And they were breaking down. They were, they took like a full minute in it to like start up sometimes. And so I wanted a new flash and particularly I was really wanting a flash with a round head. I had used a friend of mine had bought some pro photo uh, A10s, I believe. And I just, I loved the look of that round flash and, and what it looked like in photos. And so uh, when I looked at the price of the pro photos, I was like, oh, I don't know if I can afford those either. It was very expensive. I think at the time they were about $1,000 US each. Um, and I wanted at least two flashes. Uh, sometimes for my interior photography, I was using up to four flashes. And so I was trying to find a better alternative. And this is what I thought that the Godox V1s were. They were kind of a cheap alternative, and I just assumed that they were going to be as robust as the Yanguno ones. Um... Kind of true, kind of not true. So I'm going to go through first all of the good things about this flash, and then I'm going to go through the bad. And the bad, it's not the end of the world, but it's enough to want me to start searching for something else, for an alternative for me as a wedding photographer. So today you can pick up one of these flashes for about $250 US, and that's that's a big difference between $1,000 for the pro photo equivalent. The second thing that I like is the round shape. So I was looking for a round shaped flash and it has delivered, like it did exactly what I wanted it to do. I like that it has a very kind of like even light look or light pattern, I think it's technically called. I didn't like the speed light that I did have before, that it was square. And when I use direct flash, especially because that is become a very trendy thing to do, kind of a, a direct flash kind of paparazzi look in weddings um, that I found before it just created this kind of weird shape that was noticeable. And the thing that I like about this round shape is that, well, I don't notice it that much anymore. So it gives me the light direction that I want, but it's not a noticeable square or anything. It's just like a nice shot of light. The next thing I liked is the wireless connection. I like that you can pretty easily connect to two flashes. You can have a flash on your camera and that can trigger, you know, a flash that you have on a light stand. It's pretty easy to connect. It's pretty reliable and I had no issues with it and I use it quite a lot. Shortly after getting these two flashes, I got the radio trigger uh, that worked, that was compatible with them. And uh, it was also pretty easy and pretty reliable to use. Uh, so I just like put that thing on my camera and then it wirelessly triggered as many flashes as I had. Uh, and it was pretty easy to connect them a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. The next thing that I loved was the power of these flashes. It's not something that I actually really looked into and I was a little bit surprised uh, as I used the flash and as I used it at full power, I was surprised at how powerful they were. Uh, and actually they were so powerful that I was really had didn't use my studio flashes in the last two years. I don't use my studio flashes much, but I found that these were easier to set up. They were easier to use with my radio triggers and so I, they really replaced my studio flashes because just one of them was very powerful and I could easily put two of them side by side, sync them with the radio trigger, and then that was more light than I would ever need. 
The next setting that I thought I would really like, and it's still pretty good, is the modeling light. I thought this was so cool. Uh, my friend had the modeling light on the pro photo, and I was just like, wow, that's awesome. Um, I never really used it. Honestly, the one time that I really did use it consistently was uh, if I was doing, you know, some commercial work or some portraits, and I put these flashes in a big softbox. Uh, I would turn on the modeling light and that would just like give some type of light. And it was really just to like show my subject that the flash was on and this is where the light was coming from. Um, but there was I didn't really use it and I wouldn't really care that much if it if it was even on there or not. And then speaking of power. I loved that there was a lot of power, but I also loved that the setting for the low power was very low. So this flash went down to two, one, two hundred and fifty sixth of full power. And that was awesome. Uh, there's a lot of times I actually use my flash a lot on the lower end of the power spectrum. Um, and I found with that last Yanguno flash that I had uh, that the lowest wasn't low enough for me. Uh, and so I found this was just like a little touch of light. And that was something that I used over and over and over again. There are a lot of different options for this camera. Uh, primarily, I used manual, um, I would say 80 to 90% of the time, and then I will use TTL. I found the TTL to be good. Um, I'm not going to go too much into that, but it worked for what I wanted it to do. <laughs> One thing that is quite cool about this flash is that you could use TTL when it's on a radio trigger, which kind of like hurt my brain a little bit at the beginning, but is really helpful if you don't want to use manual uh, when when working with radio triggers. Speaking of the radio trigger, I love the fact that you could change the settings on the flash from the radio trigger. It was very cool, uh, particularly for interior photography. Um, there'd be so many times when I would have, you know, a flash in the next room. I'd have a flash outside. Uh, and before I had these flashes, I would have to go manually or have an assistant go and be like, oh, can you put that up a little bit? Oh, can you put that one down a little bit? Uh, and it just took so much time and I would have to walk back and forth so many times. So I loved the fact that you could, from the remote, change the settings on each of the individual flashes. And the last thing on the good category for these flashes is the battery. Oh, I love, I love this thing so much. I, I really hated using AA batteries. I had rechargeable batteries and I felt like I was always charging them. I was always losing them. Um, so the ability to just like pop out that battery, put it in the charger, and then I just had like one thing to worry about is truly a, a game changer in, in terms of just like taking so much headache away uh, when, from using a flash consistently. I also think that the capacity on these batteries was was really good and and actually kind of better than I thought it would be. I don't think I ever shot a wedding in the last two wedding seasons uh, where I fully exhausted a battery. Uh, I would actually I have exhausted them while doing interior shoots, and that's only because it's more common for me in those times to be using the flash at full power uh, pretty consistently. Uh, when I shoot for weddings, I'm not using that much flash power. And so the battery capacity was like awesome. Uh, there was even times where I shot two or three weddings and events in, in a whole weekend, and I didn't even need to charge the flash in between events. Before we continue with the video, I just wanted to quickly tell you about my light and airy preset for Lightroom. If you want that classic romantic look of film on your digital photos, then you need to check out my light and airy preset. This is the actual preset that I use on all of my work on the photos that you see on this channel. That's the preset I use. And it's based on all the film photography that I did for years, but for your digital photos. And you can find a link to it in the description below. Here is the bad. And this is really why I wanted to make this video, because the bad was slightly so infuriating to me uh, that that's I wanted you to know about it before you buy these flashes. I want you to be aware about this so that 
you know what you're getting into. So yes, it's an affordable flash. So yes, it gives you so many things. It gives you so many options for such a low and affordable price, but it is not as robust as my Young Nuo flashes. I remember when I did do my kind of initial review about this video, I did get some comments where people say that, you know, the flash shoe broke on them. I didn't find any issues with the hot shoes. Except for very recently, I was having an issue on one of my cameras that it just wasn't firing. I'm not exactly sure if that's even a flash issue or if it was a camera issue or if it just wasn't on properly. I don't know, but it did happen a few times at the last few weddings. And it's something that I wanted to look into a little bit more. The first thing is that the settings for me are just not intuitive. You know, when you first get any type of technology, there's always a, a learning curve, right? You're like, oh, okay, wait, how do I change this? How do I set this up? And I'm not a big manual reader. I just like to like get the thing. I like to start using it and then I always figure it out. And then I get into a system of just like knowing how to use it. I think that's how a lot of us, you know, deal with technology because you assume that the product is going to be intuitive. It's going to just like make sense. I still have to think when I use these flashes, like there are obviously some things that I remember how to do and I, I, I don't kind of have to think about it, but I cannot just use these without thinking. I cannot set up the flash. I can not set up the radio trigger and change settings without really being like, OK, uh, what do I do now? And like, where where is this? And. Uh, that's been really frustrating for me. Um, uh, right off the bat, I remember looking at how many buttons were on this thing and that that worried me. That worried me that there were that many and that it wasn't simplified and broken down into less buttons. And this issue is not only on the flash, but it's also on the radio trigger. Uh, some things kind of made sense, but how you have to push something and then you like push it in and then you have to move this dial to change the settings. It just, it never stuck in my brain. And every time I would use it more and more, the longer I'd use the flash, the more frustrated I would get because how to use it just never stuck in my brain. And it's frustrating, especially when you're in a fast paced environment like a wedding, you don't have time to think. You don't want to be thinking. You, you want to be able to learn the equipment in such a way where it just is natural. And I found after two wedding seasons, it's, it's still not there for me. The last two things that I'm gonna share are the most infuriating to me. <laughs> uh, so I told you that I got one of these triggers, you know, right after I got these flashes. Well, this is not the first trigger that I bought. I actually bought the more expensive one that had like the LCD screen on it. I threw it out because it stopped working. It just wouldn't turn on anymore. I tried changing the batteries. I tried looking online and pretty much it was just like, you could send it in, but it's going to take forever to possibly get fixed. I think you have to. I was I was just like, oh, OK, so it's a piece of garbage. Uh, and that was barely after a year of using it. I think it actually was maybe just after a year because I looked up like the warranty options and there was just no good options for me and I needed it quickly. So then I just had to buy. I bought the the more it's called the X2TN, um, but I got the more simple one just because I didn't want to buy another more expensive trigger and then it break again. Uh, I haven't had any issues with this. Uh, I've had it for about probably eight months. I think actually from what I remember, the settings felt seemed a little bit more intuitive on the more expensive trigger. Um, but this it, this just hurts my brain every time I use it. It is relatively easy once you figure it out, but I don't know why it just doesn't stick with my brain. I just find that the things that I want to do, like when I want to spin this wheel, I think it's going to change a setting, but it doesn't or it changes the setting in a different way. I don't know how to explain it better than that, but I don't know. These flashes, they're just not, like not made for my brain. The second thing, this was the most infuriating thing and happened relatively early on in using these flashes was that this little turning wheel button works only about 50% of the time. So it's just like broken. Um, it, it works enough that I can continue to use the flashes. 
but it got so bad at the last wedding that I shot that I just had to keep this flash at home and not use it anymore. Um, this one is still pretty good. It has a little bit of the issue where like literally it just doesn't like click. And so you got to spin the wheel around to get it to like the right spot so it'll work there. So yeah, it seems like the buttons are already starting to break down and there is no way that I can use those for another wedding season. So what does that mean for now? It means that yes, they're still usable uh, for right now. They work. Uh, but I am definitely looking to replace these in the next six months or so. Uh, just because, like, I can't be in a wedding. I can't be in a high-pressure, high-stress scenario and try to change something on my flash, and it doesn't work. That's just not an option for me. And, and while I think they were great for the year or so that I use them, I do want you to be aware that they're affordable, they give you a lot of features, but it doesn't seem like the build quality is that great. And so maybe some of you have been able to get away with using them for a long time, but it seems like if you do get kind of a lemon, it's gonna be really hard to continue using it. And the last thing I'll say is that if you want to learn more about how to actually use your flash at a wedding. I'm hosting my first ever live flash masterclass this month. If you wanna learn more about it, you can find it in the link in the description below. There's only 30 seats to this class. So if you're interested, make sure you go there right now and pick up a spot.